olive is considered a decurrent species. Multiple trunks, multiple canes are very common with the olive. They're also very prone to root crown shoots. You'll see adventitious shoots rise up from the base of the tree, producing secondary canes and trunks and stems coming up. So the olive, typically unpruned, will go quite chaotic, like a giant, large, sprawling bush. The olive tree does not belong just anywhere and everywhere. They need a fair amount of space. The root crown in maturity has a lot of power. They can lift and buckle and heave. It's a powerful tree. Arching, rounded crown form, the leaders descend all the way to the ground. It's not uncommon to see an olive tree go 20, 25 feet, 30 feet. We've seen them actually go much higher than that when they're allowed. Generally, the rounded crown form, the descending laterals, will bring them back down to the ground. They'll go to that rounded crown form naturally really train the tree early on. Don't wait and allow the tree to go completely chaotic. It is better to intervene and plan and develop and culture the appropriate canopy for site conditions. The olive tree has a tendency to be a very broad and sprawling form. Lateral limbs emerge and arch out and descend all the way to the ground. In urban settings where you have driveways and sidewalks and garages, you end up getting these very, very large cuts to control the tree, to tame the tree, to restrict the tree. They all seem to acquire very large, egregious wounds. But we don't see a lot of mushrooms. We don't see a lot of decay. The wood is so slow to rot that even though these egregious wounds are large and dramatic, the tree simply continues. They don't require a lot of irrigation. It is a dryland tree. Deep, infrequent irrigation would be preferred and recommended. Allow a lot of complexity, allow a lot of density, a lot of multiple shoots to strengthen the root crown, to power the tree up, and then in gradual stages, train to your best and strongest and best placed leaders. There can be a few disadvantages to the olive. Some people are allergic to the pollen of the olive. Another one that we find to be a common problem is the fruit drop. The fallen olives are driven over by cars and crushed, or on walkways to the entrances of buildings. You step on them and track the olive juice into the house. So they don't belong just anywhere and everywhere. There is a right place to plant the olive. The advantages of the olive perhaps outweigh any of these detracting qualities that are observed with the olive. Highly aesthetic tree, very long-lived, beautiful silhouette, home to birds. There is the right place for the olive. And so do your research, assess site conditions, and make sure olive is the right tree for your site. The olive, the tree of peace. Why would we not want the olive?